In this video, we're going to create an application from scratch in Oracle J Developer, and we're going to try to do it in 10 minutes. I haven't started the clock yet, because I'm going to do a couple of explanations before uh, we actually start creating this application, but you're going to hear me start a timer in the background, and we're going to uh, go through everything from beginning to scratch in 10 minutes. And this is just mainly to show that as complex and as difficult as J Developer is to use sometimes, uh, if you know what you're doing, you can really get around and create some really sophisticated applications pretty quickly inside of JDeveloper. So you're going to hear me start the timer here in the background, and I'm going to set it for 10 minutes, and I'm going to walk through all the steps of creating an application. First thing we obviously want to do is create a new application. So I'm going to specify it here, and I'm going to call this 10-minute demo. We have a whole bunch of different application templates that we can choose from. We're going to create a Fusion Web application, so I'm going to select Next. Automatically, Oracle is going to create a couple of projects for me. One is going to be the model, where I'm going to model uh, what goes on inside my database. The other one is going to be called uh, View Controller, where I'm going to define the view for what my application is going to look like and the controlling code that goes behind it. Because I selected an ADF application in the, ba in the previous screen, I already have some components selected here, and I can change these around if I want. But for now, I'm going to take all the defaults. So I'm going to call this the model package. Then I have the view controller package, and again, a whole bunch of technologies have been selected for me automatically. I click Next. The view package is going to call View, and I finally click Finish. So Oracle will go ahead and generate a whole bunch of files for me. And we can see this here in the left-hand side of the screen, where we have a whole bunch of files that have been created. So under my model project, I don't have anything there yet. Under my view controller, I have kind of the outline and the framework for what I'm going to do. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I want to model my database. So I'm going to create a new piece under model. And in other videos, we're going to go through and look at all of the different things that we can create. But for now, I'm going to go under business tier, and I can select this thing called business components from tables. Business components from tables is going to connect to my database, and then it's going to build all the modules that I need in the background. Under normal circumstances, you would go through and manually create an entity object, a view object, and an application module. But business components from tables will do all of those for you. It's going to take all the default values, so I won't have uh, the ability to go in through the wizard and see all the different pieces. But for now, for this demo, that's just what I'm going to select. I don't have a connection created for my database yet, so I'm going to create this one called Connection 1. I'm going to create uh, connect as my HR user. I'm going to connect to my local database, which is running Sandbox and I can click Test Connection. It's a success. Click on OK. Say this is the connection that I want to use. I click on OK. Uh, JDeveloper then goes out to the database and starts querying what options are available for me. So I'm going to create something off the Employees table. I'm going to select Employees. Say Next. What do I want to have as part of my model package? I want the Employees view to be there. It's going to go out and create all of that information for me. Do I want any read-only objects? I'm not going to have any read-only objects in this application, so I just skip over that. I'm going to take the default names for my application. I'm not going to create a business diagram. I certainly can do that to help me in my development efforts, but I'm just going to take all the defaults for now, click on Finish, and I'll have something available for me there. So now, if you notice before, we had a bunch of view controller components created. Now I have a bunch of model components created for me that's going to model exactly what's going on inside my database, inside the employees table owned by HR. So what's the next thing I have to do? Well, I have to create something to display to the end user that I want to put that information on. Does it make sense to put it in the model? Not really. It makes sense to put it in the view controller, because that's where I'm going to define all my different pieces uh, for actually displaying information to my end user. So if I right-click on that, I can select New, and I'm going to go down to my web tier, and my JSF, and I'm going to create a JF, JSF page. JSF stands for Java Server Faces. It's the tool that Oracle is using. You don't have to use faces for your display elements if you don't want to, but that's the technology that Oracle is really putting a lot of weight behind uh, moving forward. It gives you a lot of graphic capabilities uh, that can make your web application seem at almost as if it's a, a client-server application. So I'm going to select JSF page, I click on OK. I'm just going to take all the defaults. Under normal circumstances, you wouldn't call it untitled.jsp, but I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And I've actually gone ahead and created the JSF page. Now, I don't have anything on the JSF page yet. It's just a blank page. So what I'm going to do is go to my section here of Application Resources. 
sorry, not application resources. I'm going to I'm actually looking for data controls there. So under data controls, because I've modeled all the information in a view and I've taken all the defaults, I have this application module data control that models my employees view one and a whole bunch of the standard things that I would do with a database table like inserts, updates, deletes, all of that has been uh, coded for me automatically and mapped for me automatically. So if I grab the employees view one and drag it onto the page here, you can see that Oracle gives me uh, a choice of saying, okay, what do you want to create on this particular, uh, that, that goes along with the employee view? Do you want to create a form? Do you want to create some kind of chart, a graph, some kind of hierarchy viewer? Uh, do I just want to uh, have a table representation? I'm going to create a form. I'm going to go ahead and create a basic ADF form and I'll have a couple of options that are available to me. I can change the, the titles, I can change the display values, uh, you know, under, let's see, uh, I'll just change one of the values here. Uh, so maybe under phone number, I really want to call it phone pound. So I'm going to change the header around. I'm going to include navigation controls. I'm going to include a submit button. I click on OK. Oracle goes ahead and it generates everything that is going to bind all of the information on my particular web page uh, to my database tables. The designer is going to go through and make sure that all every all of the uh, attributes are set up properly. Once I have all of that done, I can actually go ahead and run my, my form now. So if I go back under projects and I scroll down to my untitled.jsp, I can right click on that and say run. And Oracle is going to take a second here to uh, start up the uh, Oracle web server that's embedded inside a J Developer. It's going to start all of that information up, and then it's going to kick off uh, a, a web page inside of uh, my Firefox browser, which is defined as my default browser on my particular uh, on my particular PC here. And as soon as that comes up, we should see a fully functioning web page that goes out and generates. Um, and that actually queries uh, information on the database. I also have the full capabilities of scrolling through records, of inserting and updating records. We'll have all of that. We were able to do this all in under 10 minutes. Now, is what we're going to show a production quality application? Obviously not. You're going to have to go in there and customize all the different pieces so that it fits exactly what, what, with uh, what your uh, production quality application is supposed to look like. But this is just an indication to show that as powerful and as complex as the JDeveloper environment is, you can still get around and generate uh, pieces of code and j uh, be productive inside a JDeveloper in a really short period of time. I'm going to obviously have other videos that go along with JDeveloper that explains each one of the steps that I've done in this particular video in a lot more detail. So Oracle has gone through and generated a whole bunch of the code. And when we see this target URL with the actual uh, target code here in the um, status window of JDeveloper, we know that it's gone through and actually generated all of the different pieces of code and we're ready to take a look at. So if I go into Firefox now, you can see that it's already started a um, web browser for me and it's opened up a new tab and we're actually querying information directly out of the database now. We have full capabilities in terms of next. You can see I can scroll forward, I can scroll back, I can go to the beginning of the list, I can go to the end of the list. I have the ability to change any of this information, click submit. So if I want to say that uh, William Geitz uh, has a commission percent of 10, I can then click submit. That stuff is actually written into the database, and you can see that uh, there's code inside of this form that says attribute set with 10 for commission in aptitude has an invalid precision or scale. So, how about 0.1 for my commission percent? We'll submit that. Record's been submitted. I can then scroll through. I can then scroll back to William Geitz, and you can see that his commission percent has, in fact, been updated to 10%. So we're going to have a whole bunch more videos on JDeveloper. You can literally have hundreds of videos. There's, it's, it's such an incredibly powerful environment. But this video was really intended to show how in under 10 minutes you can get into JDeveloper, develop an application that goes against an Oracle database, deploy that out to the web, and actually start using it in a web-based environment. So uh, we just wanted to show how easy it is, uh, if you know what you're doing inside of JDeveloper, where you can be productive as a developer very quickly.